seen from outer space. Our planet is like a mirror image of the Milky Way. From the first campfires to modern metropolises, these are the lights of civilization. It was in Asia that human beings first established settlements. The memories preserved here for thousands of years form a major part of the great encyclopedia of human civilization. Asia, the largest continent, accounts for 30% of the Earth's land area. As the home of six out of every 10 humans, it is a melting pot of civilizations and ethnic traditions. From the Tigris and Euphrates in the west, and the Indus and the Ganges in the south, to the Yellow and Yangtze rivers in the east, and across Southeast Asia and elsewhere, Asian civilizations have risen, interacted, and learned from one another. In the course of this, they have made a unique contribution to human progress. Yunnan province in southwest China is the location of Asia's biggest seed vault. Here, at 20 degrees below zero, the seeds of more than 10,000 plant species are stored. The vault is an example of how humankind is preparing for an uncertain future. Civilization became possible once early Asians had begun to plant seeds over 10,000 years ago. The historical region known as Anatolia, or Asia Minor, covered most of modern-day Turkey. The name Anatolia is Greek and means east or sunrise. It was here that wheat was first cultivated. Chatal Hürk on the Anatolian plateau is the world's earliest known agricultural settlement. 10,000 years ago, hunter-gatherer tribes realized that cultivating wheat would provide them with a more stable food supply. They made sickles and mortars and pestles to help them harvest and process what they grew. Discoveries of these implements and finds indicating that people kept sheep, goats and pigs provide evidence of primitive agricultural activity. By securing a stable and reliable food supply, humankind demonstrated that it could harness nature. In this way, it took the first steps along the path of civilization. Anatolia and the Armenian highlands are the source of the Tigris and the Euphrates. The two rivers, as they flow southward, form a crescent of fertile land before they empty into the Persian Gulf. The ancient Greeks called this region Mesopotamia, the land between two rivers. This was where the earliest civilizations arose. It was along these two rivers that, 6,500 years ago, the world's first system of canals and dams was constructed. Humankind had discovered irrigation. The inscription on this piece of clay is the oldest known formula for working out the area of a right-angled triangle. 
It was used by the ancient Mesopotamians to calculate water flow in their canals. 3,800 years ago, King Hammurabi of Babylon oversaw the construction of a system of canals through which water was directed to where it was needed. This 7th century BC relief carving shows an irrigation project in action. Using a triangular container attached to levers, water is being lifted out of the river and into the field. To express their gratitude for the bigger harvests brought by irrigation, people made carvings on their utensils. Around the time that the earliest wheat fields were being cultivated in Mesopotamia in West Asia, the first rice paddies appeared along the Yangtze River in the east. At Shenyuan Cave in Jiangxi Province, China, fossilized rice remains have been found, indicating that rice was cultivated in the area 10,000 years ago. The prologue to civilization opened with wheat and rice being planted in Asia. Still today, they remain humankind's main staple foods. By satisfying their most basic material need, the people of Asia established a foundation on which they could build civilizations. Most of the earliest pieces of pottery discovered to date have been found in Asia. Pottery represents one of humankind's first attempts at creativity. Through it, civilization was taking shape. In 2012, the 20,000-year-old fragments found in Jiangxi, the oldest known pottery in the world, were listed by Archaeology magazine as one of the top 10 discoveries of the year. The dark marks suggest regular exposure to fire. Before metal smelting was developed, pottery was used for preparing, storing, and cooking food. The 14,000-year-old Jomon pottery found in Japan bears traces of fish fat and ash. The combination of pottery and fire meant cooking could become more sophisticated. Civilization had taken another step forward. Before long, different types of pottery began appearing across Asia. The Babylonians were the first to use glaze, which prevented their pottery from leaking. The Hittites of West Asia were the first to develop the skills of firing pottery at high temperatures. At 1,100 degrees, the particles in the clay are bound tightly together, creating a light and sturdy material. Their mastery of heat also made the Hittites the first people to smelt iron. Beside the Yellow River in China, an ancient wonder was fashioned out of pottery. Emperor Qin Shi Huang's terracotta warriors stand as evidence of a magnificent project completed to perfection. The ancient Chinese had mastered the art of firing clay at carefully controlled temperatures. This allowed them to make the figures in parts and piece them together seamlessly.
The names of 80 craftsmen have been found on the bodies. So, when we list the terracotta warriors in the annals of human civilization, we are acclaiming the common laborers who made them. Several centuries later, in the busy kilns of China's Eastern Han Dynasty, pottery finally realized its true potential. Subtle adjustments to the raw materials, kilns, temperature and glaze created porcelain. Chinese porcelain, a product of Eastern aesthetics and wisdom, transformed how people live. The drawing, dating from the mid-14th century, is credited to an English writer and traveler by the name of Sir John Mandeville. During a visit to Asia, he claimed to have come across a tree in India bearing tiny lambs. What he had actually seen was a cotton plant. The German word for cotton, Baumwolle, is made up of the words for tree and wool. As early as 5,000 years ago, cotton was being cultivated in India, and products made from it were becoming part of everyday life. By the first century AD, Arab traders were bringing high-quality Indian cotton to Italy and Spain. In the course of several centuries, cotton plantations spread across Asia, and the plant became popularly known as Asian cotton. Still today, India is one of the world's major cotton producers. With hides replaced by cotton and linen, Clothes became more than a means of keeping warm. The ancient Indians used seashells to adorn and fasten what they wore. Over time, they created the button. The pursuit of beautiful and comfortable clothing reached new heights with the emergence of silk. The world's earliest silk products appeared near the Yangtze River in China. The Chen Shanyang site in Zhejiang province is known as the birthplace of silk. This life-size gilt copper silkworm was made 2,000 years ago at the time of the Western Han Dynasty. The gold plate is partly gone, but the plump figure head raised, remains a vivid representation of a worm about to spew out a strand of silk. The fact that gold and copper were used and skilled craftsmen employed to depict them shows how highly silkworms were valued. Peering over the horizon, the figure could see the Silk Road stretching from East Asia to Europe. The silk dispatched from Xi'an redefined the popular concept of fine clothing. The arrival of cotton and silk allowed Asians to imbue their clothes with elements of aesthetics and culture. Cities are the highest expression of human civilization. The first cities appeared in Asia. Six thousand years ago, Ur in Mesopotamia was a flourishing Sumerian urban center. One of the world's first cities, 
Ur had a population numbering over 30,000 and contained houses, stores, markets and temples. It represented the pinnacle of Sumerian civilization. The Sumerians had originally migrated to southern Mesopotamia 7,000 years ago. Within 2,000 years, the Sumerians had founded one of the earliest civilizations in the world. Archaeologists associate Mesopotamia with numerous discoveries and inventions, including the calendar. The story of humankind's cradle in Mesopotamia begins with the Sumerians. Indus Valley civilization embraced the concept of a modern city relatively early. The ancient city of Mohenjo-daro was established over 5,000 years ago. In its center is a well-preserved public bath, accessed by stairs at both ends. Surrounding the pool are a well, changing rooms, a water outlet and other facilities. If we could travel back in time, we would find a city with an infrastructure that would seem remarkably modern. Mohenjo-daro had a sophisticated sewage system and even the world's earliest sitting toilet. The city also had wide main streets, simple yet practical buildings providing ample privacy and many other modern features. All this has led it to being called the Manhattan of the Bronze Age. Cities brought people together in large numbers. By doing so, they also facilitated the division of labor, which in turn released immense creative power. Ancient records tell of a magnificent construction project undertaken in Mesopotamia in the sixth century BC. It was said that anyone who laid eyes on the hanging gardens of Babylon would be transfixed by their beauty. The gardens were described as comprising four levels, apparently floating above the ground. Maintaining such a vast, elevated garden in arid West Asia would have required a highly advanced system of water supply. Although no physical remains of the hanging gardens of Babylon have ever been found, the beauty, ingenuity, and mystery of this ancient wonder continue to fascinate scholars to this day. Over the millennia, Asian civilizations have accomplished many magnificent feats of architecture. The Great Wall of China, Borobudur Temple in Indonesia, Angkor Wat in Cambodia, and the Taj Mahal in India. Collectively, they are known as the Four Wonders of the Ancient East. In 1977, when the U.S. sent the two Voyager probes towards the edge of the solar system, each carried on board a vinyl record titled The Sounds of Earth. 
The records include five Asian melodies. The orchestral piece, Kinds of Flowers from Indonesia. The shakuhachi tune, depicting cranes in their nest from Japan. The folk song, Mugam from Azerbaijan. The Chinese Qin tune, Flowing Streams. And the Indian song, Jat Kahan Ho. This touching melody could be heard in Asia 5,500 years ago. In the ancient city of Ugarit in Syria, archaeologists have found a clay tablet inscribed with a musical score. Using modern technology, experts have recreated the ancient tune. Jiahu Bong Flute, discovered in China, is the world's oldest playable wind instrument. Its seven holes are evidence that ancient Asians had mastered seven-tone scales as early as 9,000 years ago. The ancient music of Asia is one of humankind's great cultural treasures. East, South, Southeast, Central, and West Asia all developed their own unique musical culture. Even in the highly developed societies of today, there's one thing that remains unchanged from ancient times the ubiquitous wheel. The wheel's invention in Asia was as important to humankind as the discovery of fire. Six thousand years ago, the Sumerians found that using spinning disks made it easier to shape their pottery clay. Although the potter's wheel wasn't designed for transportation, the secret of the wheel had been unlocked. These drawings, showing early sled-like Sumerian carts, are the oldest known depiction of a wheeled vehicle. American anthropologist Robert Lowy wrote that every society that has used the wheel inherited it from the Babylonians, directly or indirectly. During the Han Dynasty, around 2,000 years ago, the Chinese developed a way of measuring distance by counting the number of revolutions completed by the wheels on a special chariot. Having entered the world stage, the wheel was destined to remain a fundamental part of human civilization. Whether powered by human or animal labor, wind or steam power, internal combustion or electricity, the wheel has been a constant presence in humankind's pursuit of progress and a better future. Another of the great Asian inventions that have helped promote human progress is numerals. The numbers we use today have been bequeathed to us by the people of ancient India. However, Indian numerals undertook a major detour before going global. First, 
Arab mathematician Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi in the 9th century codified them in a textbook on the Hindu art of reckoning. In Europe, this Hindu Arabic numeral system became known simply as Arabic numerals. But perhaps India's greatest contribution to mathematics is the zero. A 9th century stone inscription in this temple in Gwalia in Madhya Pradesh contains the earliest use of the symbol for zero. Here, a sutra recording the number of ritual offerings refers to two, seven, and zero. This is the origin of the familiar round shape that is widely used to denote zero today. In India, the ground floor of buildings is often referred to as floor zero. Rhythms and routines that we follow in our daily lives today are the creation of Asian civilizations. In ancient Babylon, an hour was defined as 60 minutes, a minute as 60 seconds, seven days as a week, and 12 months as a year. A year was reckoned to be 365 days, six hours, 15 minutes, and 41 seconds long. This deviates from the modern calculation by just 26 minutes and 55 seconds. The ancient Chinese invented negative numbers, and the ancient Indians determined the circumference of the Earth to within 100 kilometers of the actual figure. Arabs invented algebra and trigonometry. They were also the first to calculate the length of the prime meridian and to reason that the Earth spins on its axis and orbits the Sun. Across ancient West Asia, from the Iranian plateau to Mesopotamia, clay tablets were widely used in creating written records. The many tablets that have been discovered provide us with valuable insights into the earliest civilizations in the region. Istanbul Archaeology Museum houses a tablet containing the oldest known love poem. The poem is rendered in cuneiform script, a writing system developed by the ancient Sumerians. Cuneiform was employed in transcribing around a dozen languages across West Asia. By means of the written word, information could be transmitted through time and space. Today, it allows us to bond with our ancient ancestors, even after thousands of years. This is the world's oldest surviving peace treaty. Written in cuneiform script, it was signed by the Egyptian pharaoh, Ramses the Great, and the Hittite king, Hattusilis III. Agreements, by being recorded in writing, acquired much greater authority. After being in use for around 3,000 years, cuneiform script gradually disappeared. But on the far side of Asia, Chinese characters have stood the test of time. With their origins going back 5,000 years, Chinese characters have a longer, uninterrupted history of use than any other script in the world. It's said that if a person from the Han Dynasty in the first century BC were to have traveled forward in time to the Tang Dynasty in the eighth century AD, he would have felt quite at home. 
For almost a millennium, the written and spoken language had remained virtually the same, and the adherence to Confucian philosophy and ancestor worship was little changed, as was the system of administration. China is the only civilization to have continued without interruption for 5,000 years. Collected in history books, literature, and poetry, Chinese characters can be likened to building bricks, supporting the great hall of Chinese civilization. The Louvre in Paris houses a large basalt stele. Inscribed on it is the Code of Hammurabi, King of Babylon. This is one of the oldest and most comprehensive legal codes ever discovered. It gives physical form to one of the greatest achievements of Eastern civilization. The Code of Hammurabi would have a major influence on later legal systems. The inscription records the legal principles employed by King Hammurabi in governing his kingdom. He could never have foreseen how far and for how long the influence of his laws would extend. In 2015, the tomb of the Marquis of Hai Hun, a member of China's Han imperial family, was opened. In the tomb were found more than 5,200 mud-covered inscribed bamboo slips. Contained on these slips is the Qi Analects, which had been lost for 1,800 years. As one of three ancient versions of the Analects of Confucius, they are a vital reference for the study of the thought that has influenced all of East Asia for thousands of years. In China, Confucius is considered one of the greatest scholars that ever lived. He and his followers formulated the philosophy known as Confucianism. Over the last 2,000 years, the light of Confucian thinking has influenced every aspect of Chinese spiritual activity, social conduct, and lifestyle. Having spread from China to other parts of Asia, Confucianism made its way to Europe and around the world, becoming an important part of, and major influence on, human civilization and global culture. In 18th century France, translations introduced scholars to the thoughts of the ancient sage from the East. The Enlightenment philosopher Voltaire was especially impressed by what he read. In his philosophical dictionary, he wrote of Confucius, let us acknowledge that no legislator ever announced to the world more useful truths. And he quoted one of Confucius's best known sayings, do to another as to thyself. Over the course of several millennia, the ancient civilizations of Asia produced numerous illuminating ideologies and philosophies that have furthered our understanding of the world around us. This power to shed light is the core of civilization.
At Asia is the cradle of many of humankind's great religions, is a reflection of the continent's diversity. As these religions' values, moralities, and philosophies converged and blended, so they became the focus of exchange and dialogue among Asian civilizations. Throughout history, the splendor of Asian values and Oriental wisdom has never faded. Asia's contributions are not confined to the ancient world. The values and wisdom that developed here still inspire humankind as it continues to progress. Despite their great diversity, Asia's civilizations share many common underlying features. Like so many bright lights, when they come together, they can illuminate all of Asia and the world.